Chapter 18, 10 Ways to Help Difficult People with Their Emotional Intelligence Having a Talk Sometimes, someone's behavior is just too annoying or problematic for you to deal with it in a subtle way you just can't beat around the bush. In that kind of situation, you need to take a more direct approach. Let the person know that you want to have a talk. Schedule a time and place for your discussion where you won't be interrupted. If you're talking to a family member, try to avoid places such as the bedroom or the kitchen. You spend a lot of quality time with your spouse or other family members in these places and they should not be associated with dealing with difficult problems. Plan out your talk in advance. Always start with positive comments. You can open the conversation by thanking the person for making the time available to talk with you. Also, you might want to comment on one or two positive things about the person or positive experiences that you've had with the person. Then, move on to how you feel about some problematic behavior of the other person. Focus on your feeling about the behavior its effect on you. For example, you might say, I feel really upset when you put me down in front of other people, like the way you did with Jan on Tuesday. By doing this, you're not criticizing the person, but rather the effects of her behavior. You might want to practice saying it out loud by yourself a few times, or writing out point form notes, so you can ensure that you can say the right thing in the right way before the time comes to actually deliver the message. Knowing whether you've been heard after you deliver the message, which I talk about in the preceding section, you need to determine whether the person you're talking to heard that message. Often, these kinds of discussions can lead to increased emotions and failure to focus on the message. So, you might want to do a message check, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you know what I mean? 299-300 Part V, the part of tense then, you might want to get the other person to repeat your concern. You want to know whether what you said is exactly what was heard. This process ensures that the focus stays on your feelings not on the other person being bad. Gauging the intention to change when you feel confident that the difficult person you're speaking to received your message, as discussed in the preceding section, you can see whether the other person has any intention of changing. Either the person gets it or he doesn't. If he justifies his behavior, or fails to acknowledge your feelings, then he probably doesn't have much intention to change. I talk more about messages not getting through in the section exploring the effect of poor behavior later in this chapter. If, on the other hand, the person acknowledges your feelings and expresses some regrets, you may get some behavior change. At this point, you should be ready with some alternative behaviors that you want to see from the person, as I discuss in the section providing strategies later in this chapter. Giving feedback giving good, healthy feedback to the difficult person can help move the process along. The feedback that you give needs to include three aspects, let the person know her positive and negative behaviors. Give suggestions about how she might improve the positive behaviors even more while containing or modifying the negative behaviors. Provide input about how well she's dealing with changing these behaviors once every couple weeks at first, then perhaps once a month depending on how frequently you see each other. Providing feedback effectively requires that you act like a good coach. You want to deliver delicate news, yet you also want to keep the person motivated to improve. The best feedback usually specifies a, positive, behavior that you want to see the person do more of. For example, you might say, maybe you could give me compliments once in a while. This approach would probably be more effective than saying, stop insulting me. Chapter 18, 10 Ways to Help Difficult People with Their Emotional Intelligence Providing Strategies Some of the feedback that you provide may include strategies for change. By reading this book and other books that deal with changing difficult people's behavior, you may come up with various strategies for behavior change. By adapting these strategies to your specific situation and spelling them out for the other person, you can help start the change process. Martha has a difficult time saying no to her boss. Her friend Claudia acts as a helpful coach in how to deal with the situation. Every time my boss dumps on me I just don't know what to do, Martha complains. Well, can't you stand up to him in some way? 
Claudia asks. How can I do that? He's my boss, she replies. Yes, but that doesn't give him the right to dump on you or put you down. Maybe you could say something like, I appreciate your concern for having the work done a certain way, but I think it would be more helpful for both of us if you would give me constructive criticism. Tell me how you want it done. I believe we both want